guys, it's Nikki and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. Today's video, I'm so happy to film. I'm really excited to film because I never really talked about um, my career aspirations or school on my channel. Um, besides when I think I, gra yeah, when I graduated with my Associates in Arts degree in 2020, I talked about it a little bit. I think I filmed like a vlog. Maybe I didn't post it. I don't know but today's video as you can tell by the title I am going to be talking about how to get into sonography school or ultrasound school a sonography program whatever the equivalent to those are I recently was admitted into the sonography program of my choice and I just wanted to share my journey and what I've learned along the way um, with that being said, today's video is basically going to be about how to get into the program, so I'm not going to get too much into my personal story, um, but it did take me a while to get here. So if you guys want to hear that journey, you guys can let me know down below and I'll be happy to film it. But today's video is going to be focused on how to get into your sonography program of choice. I have notes on my phone here. <laughs> um because it's so important to me i'm very happy to film this i'm so happy to have been accepted so let's just go ahead and get into it so to start off or to preface i want to say that normally programs are an associate's degree so it's going to be like an associate's in science some of them are going to be cccs which are going to be like credit or certificate programs um you choose what you want i personally wanted to do an associate's in science degree for my um, sonography program so I chose that when applying but you choose as you please um, I had my associates in arts prior in health science prior to applying to the sonography program which in my case I believe was extra points if not required um, each school is different like I said so some of them will require you to have a degree at least your associates in arts um, I don't think it matters the major or some type of allied health program completion level, which I'll get into in a few points. You have extra points for having a degree prior to applying, applying to your program. So it's always good to, before you apply, kind of check out the prerequisites. That's one of my points, but to check out the prerequisites and what they want you to have prior to applying. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This is like my little, my little intro summary. I think that sonography programs or these type of certificate programs in general are about how you build your per portfolio. So once you realize that sonography is what you want to do, I think it's best to start researching programs around you, wherever you want to go, wherever your heart desires, and to really research what they want you to have, what credits, what programs, all of that, so that you can build your portfolio as you're already completing what you've wanted to do which I'll get into. So I want to preface by saying GPA is important. So let's say there's a minimum of a 2.5 GPA. Does it mean that there's not going to be someone who has a 3.8 GPA and applies? And let's say they go from 25 to 40 points. So you're going to have 25. The other person is going to have 38 points. Who are they going to most likely accept? That's something to keep in your mind. Um, it's always good to get the GPA up. And it's good to do that in the credits that would have been applicable to apply for the program so that you're getting your GPA up and you're finishing the credits that you need to apply. So it's like killing two birds with one stone. So let me get into my points. So the first point that I want to make in this video prior to applying to your desired sonography program, ultrasound school, whichever, is to make sure that the program is accredited. Accreditation is defined as the recognition from an accrediting agency that an institution maintains a certain level of educational standards. Basically, if you go ahead and complete a program under a school that's not accredited, it's almost like you didn't do anything. You can It can be harder for you to find jobs, harder for you to even prove in a professional setting that, hey, I went to school for this. So it's better to make sure prior to applying and making your school selections is to make sure that the schools are accredited. Number two, prerequisites, like I was saying. So the main two prerequisites that I want to talk about that I think are going to be important to any sonography program is going to be anatomy and physiology one and two, and also physics. So personally, I took applied physics. I did that, what, last summer? And so what I was talking about with the whole killing two birds with one stone, I was finishing up my associate's in arts degree and I did more research on the sonography program that I wanted to apply to and I saw that applied physics was one of the prerequisites 
it. So I used that applied physics to finish off my associates in arts degree. So I killed two birds with one stone. You do it however you want, but it's always good to kind of, you know, figure it out beforehand so that you can kind of, you know, do it that way, like a double whammy. Like I was like, all right, you know, I'm finishing up my degree. I need one more credit um, in electives and sonography needs applied physics. That's mainly what your electives are for um, when you're doing your associate's degree at a community college or anywhere. Um, they're mainly for the prerequisites for your desired program that you're gonna apply to afterwards. So always keep that in mind and make sure that you're making those decisions wisely. Um, another one that was required for me was biology lecture in lab. Now, let's have a moment of truth. This isn't my video about how I what my journey was to sonography and if you guys want to see that video you can let me know because it was a long journey not everything is graduating high school boom i want to do sonography that didn't happen that's not always what's going to happen and that's okay so if you guys want to hear my journey of how i knew i wanted to be a sonographer and apply to ultrasound school you let me know but so i thought that i had everything planned out i had completed one more thing prior to this was I'll speak in another um, bullet point and then I was like oh my god I need biology so let me tell you this past summer yes summer 2021 I took biology lecture and lab six weeks six weeks okay six weeks biology is one of my weakest subjects so it was tough but I passed I got an A um, in both the lecture and the lab but to say that it was easy it wasn't um especially with them being in six weeks but that goes to show with doing your research beforehand don't be like me don't wait till the last minute i took it in six weeks because my application deadline was coming up and it needed to be on my official transcript or unofficial transcript before then so i was like all right i gotta take it in may and i'll finish in the beginning of july so that by like july whatever it's gonna be on my transcript and then i can apply the next day Th that's a different level of stress i wouldn't do it but if that's what it comes to it's okay i did it and i got into my program um but don't stress yourself out you know kind of really do your research before you know you want to apply for that upcoming semester so that you're not stressing at the last minute like your girl <laughs> um also you're gonna have to have like other basics so like enc 1101 so like english composition psychology is another one that you're gonna have to have like those type of um credits from college so i personally took enc 1101 in high school through the ace program but that still counted so you want to make sure that your program is also going to take those credits that you have from high school if you have any college credits or any credits like that AP ACE um, you want to make sure that those are on your unofficial transcript as well so that they know to accept it when you're applying another one so like speech or public speaking was another one that I had to do for it it was either um, I think it was either speech or another one and I did speech so I put speech for my program and then also college algebra was one I took college algebra like two years ago so that was done and did but these are like some of them like I said this is for my personal program that I applied to a lot of them are similar but um while I was applying to this one I was still doing research on others because you don't want to spread yourself thin you don't want to just be like yeah I'm gonna get into this program because what if you don't you know so it's always good to look at different programs so i'm kind of compiling all the information that i've seen from different programs oh. so for the program that i personally got into when i became serious about school again in 2020 and i um, finished up my associates in arts i realized oh my gosh i can't apply to the program because I, I didn't do the PCA program. The PCA program is the patient care assisting program. So the program, the sonography program at my school personally required that. So I went ahead and thank God they were at the same school. So I went ahead and completed that. Um, I did the PCA program and in the end, I actually became a licensed CNA in a licensed CNA, um, certified nursing assistant. So I mean, it was 
it was good. Um, I didn't want to just do the three and a half month program and not have something to come out with it besides a certificate. I also became like a home health aide and everything. I got like different certificates and things. So I can also do a video on that, um, how I became a CNA because, you know, that was something that I didn't plan on doing. Literally, I found out and I was like, okay, I have to apply to this program. And then I became a state licensed CNA. So, I mean... I got a lot of info for you guys. This past year has been a lot for your girl, but I I love to watch videos like these and I want to share that with you. So um, be aware if they want you to complete any like programs like the PCA or want you to have your CNA license. Some of them will say, oh, um, for extra points, you can have your CNA license and then work as a, for a year in like a hospital. And then that'll give you like 10 extra points towards your application um really look at all of the um point system because a lot of the program the sonography programs are point systems and really look how you can stack up and earn points based off of what you already have and what you need to do make sure you know what you want to focus on so some schools can either do general ultrasound or sonography or some of them can focus on like vascular or um obgyn so make sure that your school is going to focus in on what you personally want to do so i know my school is basically general sonography so i personally want to be um, in an obstetrician gynecologist office doing sonography that's my goal um, I want to focus in on women's health just in general because I have a really big passion for women's health so I had to make sure that my program was tailored to that because if not then it's not the right program for me as you can hear it's really hard to find a good um I feel like it's really hard to find a good sonography program you have to f make sure it's accredited and that's not every single program you have to make sure that it's tailored to what you personally want to do and that's not every single program but I assure you that you will find that when you do your research of course I also notice so it's crazy how i got into the program um because when i actually found out that i was getting into the program i was applying to another program and i'll share that in like my journey of finding out that i wanted to be a sonographer like through the years so i noticed that while i was filling out those applications for other schools i noticed that a lot of them will want you to do an essay so i just wanted to say that if your desired program wants you to write an essay be honest and be you i think that's the best way to showcase who you are and your passion for sonography and what you want to do I have to say I was literally in the middle of writing an essay for another program when I got the email that I got accepted into my desired program and the essay I was writing was good I was for sure gonna get into that program I was like listen I was like I don't know I'm doubting like I don't know I'm scared and then I was writing out the essay and then I got in and I'm thankful and I'm blessed for that but um just be you be you in your applications, be honest, be you, and I can assure you that you'll get in just by doing that. You have to also attend an information session because you want to make sure, like I said, that you're getting all the credits that you need to get and also that you're doing everything. Like I said, if I didn't do the research, I wouldn't have known that I had to complete like a PCA program or something equivalent to that prior to applying because I would have just been like, oh. Well, here I am. Let me wait another year. I got it done and done. And then I was admitted this fall and I finished that program this last spring. Make sure that you're taking the appropriate courses. So like the course ID and everything, make sure that it's equivalent and that you're earning proper points and extra points. Extra points are what's going to get you there. For example, biology lecture and lab were extra points. But I was like, I know that I want to get extra points. I want to ensure my acceptance. So that's why I did the biology in six weeks this past summer so that I can apply and get it on my unofficial transcript by the deadline, like I said. I don't know if I recommend that I do your research beforehand but for me it was kind of like all right Nikki like you gotta get this ball rolling if you can do it you can do it I was surprised that I could do it it was hard <laughs> but yeah and don't wait until the deadline I did wait until the deadline <laughs> Does that mean I suggest that you guys do? No. There was so much stress that came along with that. Um, like, hey, if it happens like that, that's okay. Don't stress yourself out. Take a deep breath. Take a breather. Don't let it stress yourself out. Um, 
because what is stress gonna do for you at the end of the day it's not gonna make you get accepted it's not gonna make you get denied it's not gonna make the class go faster it's not gonna make your points go up by 20 it's just gonna cause a negative effect on you so really don't stress take it slow what's meant for you will be for you and what's meant to be will be for you whether it's meant to be right now or in the future but it will always be the way it's supposed to be so do not stress and lastly that just goes with my last point stay positive um Let's say you apply and you don't get in this year, that's okay. Any programs, including mine, if you're a previous applicant, you get five points. That puts you right ahead of a lot of people. It's okay. Um, I had to really do that pep talk for myself because I wasn't sure if I was going to get in. I mean, with these programs, they'll mainly accept 16 to 20 students. My program accepted about 19, 20 students. And there's so many applicants and you don't know what they have you don't know if they did the pca program you don't know if they did the extra biology lab you don't know if they worked previously or were previously a registered radiologist and got extra points but you don't know so you know stay positive and don't let that get you down like i said there's other programs but also you get five extra points next year if you or however many extra points next year if you apply again and boom you're in like i said it all goes also with your timing if it's not the right time and you may be disappointed about it but you're gonna realize why it didn't happen in that moment so it's all about being positive and being you and being confident in yourself and in your application um i can assure you that even if you don't get in let's say the desired year you wanted to i'm sure you'll get in the next year and you'll probably have more opportunities you'll probably be able to do more research i had to really have that pep talk with myself because in reality when you're submitting your application you're not entitled to being accepted into the program so it's always good to have those pep talks and be honest with yourself and set up future plans for yourself as well um I was like okay you know what if i don't get in then i can i had like three different pathways i'm like all right maybe i can take the hesse and uh, apply for nursing school go back to what i originally wanted to do um or i could work as a cna for a year kind of stack up save money then boom extra points plus i worked so that could be extra points to really set up backup plans for yourself so that you always have a plan don't let yourself get in a rut it's okay and i can assure you guys that you guys are gonna be good so thank you guys so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed i'm so happy to make these videos like i said i would love to make a video on how i became a cna how my life journey kind of ended me ended up to where i am today with like getting into sonography school and how i wanted how i knew i wanted to become a sonographer so you guys let me know down below if you guys want me to film those and i will definitely let you guys know that so thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like comment down below and subscribe and also good luck to all you aspiring sonographers including myself because i have not started the program yet and i know it is going to be difficult but i have the passion and the drive so i know i'll be fine but thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one. Bye.